QuickBooks Online 2022. Purchase of furniture and investment transactions. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file that we set up with our 30-day free trial. Holding control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. In the business view as opposed to the accounting view, if you wanted to change to the accounting view, it is something that you can do by going to the cog up top and scrolling down to the accounting view. We will be toggling back and forth either here or by jumping on over to the sample company file, which is in the accounting view to look at where the different items would be located in the two views. So now we're going to be going and let's open a couple tabs up top, right clicking on the tab up top duplicating the tab we're going to do it again go into the tab first tab right clicking on it duplicating it again to put our reports in place as those are thinking jumping back on over to the sample company just so we can look at where the reports are here in the accounting view on the left hand side if i go back on over to the business view in our current company file second tab which is open it's in the uh business overview section And we're in the reports and we want to check out the balance sheet. The balance sheet. I'm going to close the hamburger and then scroll up top and do the range change from 01, 01, 21, 212, 31, 2, actually 22, 22. We're in 22 this, this time. 01, 01, 22, 01, let's do 12, 31, 22. And then run it. So there we have it. Let's go to the tab to the right. This time I'm going to go back to the business overview where the reports are located, but this time not opening the profit and loss. Instead, the trial balance, which I'm going to type in up top to do trial balance. We're not doing the profit and loss because there's going to be no impact on the income statement thus far. Closing up the hamburger. Range changing it up top from 010122 to 123122 running that one okay let's go back to the balance sheet we're imagining we're starting out our new company file we got money we needed capital and we put capital in the business with some transactions often you will find when starting a new business or expanding money coming from the owner or if it was a corporation from the owners in terms of selling stock and or taking out a loan we entered those two transactions non-normal transactions transactions that don't happen all the time or every day but are there oftentimes when a new company is started out therefore there's no actual form really designed specifically for those types of transactions given the fact that these forms are designed for the day-to-day -day transactions typically but cash was impacted and therefore we showed we we used you know basically a deposit form for those first items I'm gonna scroll down just a bit to get out of here and then <laughs> scroll close up the hamburger scroll up a bit again so now we're gonna take that money and we're gonna invest it so the typical investments we would be putting it in would be the investment of inventory depending on the type of industry we are in or long-term assets such as buildings equipment and machinery and so on that we're going to use to then generate money in the future and then we're going to take some of that money expecting that we're going to put it into some investment shortly but wanting to hold on to it for now somewhere other than cash where we might get a return on it and so we're going to put some of that into like stocks and bonds and investment type of account now remember if you're thinking about a business company just want to be clear that if you're not thinking about a financial investment company meaning a company designed to make revenue off of investments such as interest dividends capital gains then a, a business like this where you're basically any other non-financial business where you're making money by selling guitars in this case or doing guitar lessons and so on that means that you're, you don't typically want your investments in here generally in the stocks and bonds you would want them uh, those types of investments on the personal side of things right that would be a personal that would be outside of your business account it would generally be in your personal account you would think for the stocks and bonds the money in here is here specifically so that you can use that money for the business in this case purchasing and selling guitars and so the only time we would have it in basically an investment account in other words if we had excess cash that we weren't using 
to put back in the business or planning to use to put back in the business soon, we would give it to the owner generally, and this is the general concept of any business structure, whether it be a sole proprietorship or a partnership or a uh, sole proprietor or a corporation, you would, you would say, oh, well, if there's excess cash and it's not being used or planned to be used to reinvest to generate revenue, you should give it to the owner in the, in the uh, way of dividends or, in this case, draws. So the owner can take that money and make money on it with, with their own investments or invest it some other place. However, if you do plan on using it in the business, then it might be appropriate to put it into like a holding account to basically hold on to it and make a little bit of revenue while you're holding on to it before you spend the money. So that's the first thing that we will do. As we do this, you also want to kind of keep in mind, you can use QuickBooks for the personal accounts as well. And uh, so we have some courses on that. If you want to look onto that in more detail, you can use one QuickBooks file to actually track your business and personal by using classes. I won't get into that right now, but you can uh, take a look at that. And in that instance, you would possibly be recording transactions related to your investments more likely on it. And so in that sense, then uh, you want to think about what should QuickBooks do versus what should other accounting software do. Remember that QuickBooks is not here generally to, to track the day-to-day -day transactions of an investment account. It's there to give you where you stand as of a certain point in time. So, you, so usually if you're investing, you might want to invest basically or put your accounts in here possibly by the investment company, like your bank that you're investing in or E-Trade or something like that and then have the E-Trade account give you more detail. You might break out short-term and long-term investments, for example, or investments that are under the umbrella of a retirement plan, such as an IRA, or such as a 401k plan as kind of long-term that you can't really access, and then short-term, possibly all your other types of investments. So, but you don't want too much detail on the QuickBooks side of things, typically, because you want the detail of the day-to-day -day transactions on uh, basically your investment accounts or in other software that would track that kind of more detailed day-to-day -day trends stuff. Okay, so that said, our first one's going to be putting money into like an investment account, which we're going to assume is something like stocks and bonds, because we're going to take some of that money and put it into some stocks and bonds, and we're going to purchase equipment. So let's do the same kind of thing. We're going to go into the plus button and say, is there a form related to the purchase of investments? There's not one specifically designed for it, because it's not something that we do on a day-to-day -day transaction basis for a non-financial company. Is cash affected? It is. So we could use possibly an expense form or a check form. Now, if we're using an expense or check form, oftentimes I would do that once again with the register because I think that would be a little bit easier to enter the transactions typically. So I'm gonna do that with the register by going to the bookkeeping item down below. If you were in the other view, the accounting view, it would be in the accounting area. And then I'm going to go to the chart of accounts, close up the hamburger, and just go right into our register for the bank account. And then I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to hit the drop down up top, and we're going to choose the type of form as an expense form. Note that the expense form and the deposit form are, in essence, the same kind of form, except that the check form, I'm sorry, the check form and the expense form are, in essence, the same type of form, except that the check form will typically be requiring a check to enter. The expense form would be something if it was like an online transaction where you don't have a reference number uh, to reference here. And that's kind of nice because the check form, when you use it, will populate the, the check number automatically, the next check number in line, which is a good internal control. All right, so this is going to be as of 0101, let's say, uh, 220102, let's say. So 010422, and this is going to be v Vanguard, we're going to imagine. Van is the investment company that we're going to put this into. Vanguard, is that how you spell it? Let's say, let's, let's just assume that. And we're going to say that it's going to be a vendor, although it's not really a vendor, it's kind of like a bank. So those vendor or customers don't quite uh, work out. Uh, in terms of the term that we're going to say this is an investment or investment and it's going to be a payment we're going to say of twelve thousand dollars of that money we got we're going to put into this investment for a short period now it's not going to be an expense the other side is not going to be expense here uh, but rather a decrease to the checking account of course decrease to the checking account and the other side is going to go into our investment account so I don't think we have an investment account here. Notice the expenses are the things that pop up first because most of the time when there's an outflow, it's gonna be an expense that it's gonna to go to. I'm looking for the asset accounts 
on down below. We've got inventory, loan, payment, uh, uncategorized, accumulated. So we don't have any uh, short-term investment accounts set up. So I'm gonna make a new one, which you could do by going up top and adding one here. A lot of times I'll just type in down here, short-term, let's say, investment account and then tab and then it'll go into the adding of the account feature here and notice even in the business view it's given me like the normal account settings to give me all the detail i need to add the account which is nice so i was a little worried because when i go into the gl it gives me some restricted stuff sometimes it seems like so in any case this is going to be a an, an other current asset account other current asset we're going to call it and allowance for bad debt we're going to say inventory investment so investment other let's say short-term investment will be the description now if you have multiple kind of areas that you have short-term investment in you could break it out between the types of investment but you wouldn't most likely want to break it out by individual investment like i invested in this uh this series of stocks and that stock and this stock because that detailed information you probably want somewhere else you might want to put it in place however by vanguard investments the, the person you're investing in or the financial institution which you could put in under the subcategory then using subcategories of short-term investments for example or you might categorize in general these are you know bonds versus stocks for example which could be a little bit uh, more difficult to break out because they might be on the same financial statements but you can you could try to do it like that without getting too detailed on it is the point and then we're going to save it and close it so i'm going to save it and close it here and say let's do it let's save it and let's close it and then let's check it out let's go to the balance sheet and see what happened let's see what happened do it and see what happens run it checking account let's go into it drilling down on the cash and there is our expense form so if i go into it it's not going to take me to the register but to an expense type of form looking like this so there's the vin the payee at top they got the the category on down below looks good closing it back on out scrolling back up top the other side went into an investment account so where is that where did that go short term here it is short term investment twelve thousand going into it there is our expense form that was used to create it next we're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna take some of our our capital here and and put it into some long-term investments investing in some furniture and equipment so let's go to the first tab this is another one that if i hit the 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 um hamburger <laughs> and then go into the plus button there's no transaction that's really designed for the purchase of furniture and equipment specifically uh, we could use like an expense form and a check form and in essence those are the forms we will use but furniture and equipment's a long-term uh, kind of transaction so we don't usually do it like all the time as opposed to short term like paying the utility bill so in this case if we're paying cash it would be an expense form or a check form but the other thing you might do with these big purchases is purchase them and finance them which again there's not a normal kind of transaction for the financing of long-term equipment because it's not something that happens all the time but this one we're going to pay for cash with it here we will finance a purchase in a future presentation in the following month to see that kind of process as well i'm not going to use a check or an expense form here however because i think it's easier once again to use the register so i'm going to close this back out we're going to go back into the register close up the hamburger and if i hit the drop down I'm gonna choose the expense form again, as opposed to the check form so that we don't have a check number. Actually, let's let's put a check number in there. Let's use a check form. And this one I'll say happened on the 9th. On the 9th, that's the 8th, the 9th. Notice I'm hitting the plus button. You can't see it, but I'm hitting the plus button <laughs> to, to plus up to the 9th. And that's a little bit faster to do oftentimes. The check number now populating automatically here so i might want to like populate it this way like 1001 imagining let's let's i'm going to imagine we're starting at 1002 that's the number on our checkbook i'm imagining here and then the payee is going to be the payee is going to let's say it's office office depot office depot that we're purchasing from i'm going to add that by hitting tab 
It's going to be a vendor. This is a legitimate vendor this time because we're purchasing from Office Depot. And the memo is going to be uh, purchase, purchase furniture, furniture. Now, you might want more detail in the memo saying exactly what you purchased and referencing it. Because if it's a large purchase, this is something you're going to have to give to your tax professional to add it to your depreciation schedule. So any large purchase that you're putting on the books as an asset, you want to make sure that you're keeping the information for it and sa you know, saving the detail related to it so that you can provide that to the tax professional. This is going to be for, we're going to say 18000 The other side is going to go into our asset account. Once again, it's not an expense. It's looking at the expenses first because that's usually the things that we're going to be using, but we're gonna look for the asset account, which is a fixed asset type of account. And there it is. If you know what it is, you can also type in furniture and it'll start to populate. So we want furniture and equipment, this account here. And so I'll pick that up and then I'm gonna say save it and save it. So we'll save it there. Let's go back to our balance sheet, <clears throat> scroll up and run the report to freshen it up. And if I go <clears throat> into the checking account, my voice is going, don't go boys, don't go. There's the 18,000. If I go into it, it goes into an actual check type of form. Looks like the expense type of form, except it has a check up top and a check number on it. Closing that back up. We're gonna go back up and then say, let's look at the other side which is going into the equipment account down here furniture and equipment going into that one and there is our check there as well looks good looks like everything has been populated the way it's supposed to everything is going according to the plan let's go back to the first tab let's do it one more time that was good times so let's do it again let's say we're purchasing another one this time from amazon furniture and equipment same transaction we're going to say this is as of the 11th and then the check number we'll keep the check number we'll say it's a check form and this is going to we're going to purchase from amazon now also note that you might be purchasing things from like a something like an amazon which is an online online retailer or from like a home depot or depot shop and they, you might have some things that are going to be equipment and some things that are going to be uh, just expenses like supplies and so, uh, and, and you might be doing this with bank feeds. We'll talk about bank feeds later in another section, but just realize you might want to set like a dollar limit and try to say, well, if it's over this dollar limit, it's likely that I should be capitalizing it, put it on the books as an asset, depreciating it over its useful life because the tax code, if nothing else, will require me to do that as opposed to expensing it so that, and, and when we get to the bank rules, we'll see that you can actually apply a different bank rule and to kind of try to automate that process. But you want to keep that in mind. If I'm purchasing something that's large, bigger dollar amount, do I need to capitalize it? And if so, we put it on the books as an asset and then I want to keep the receipt and so on to give it to my tax professional so that they can put it in the depreciation schedules. So I'm going to say purchase, purchase uh, equipment or fixed asset. You might want more detail on what exactly you purchased, you know, and break out that detail because again, you're going to need it for the depreciation schedules. 7,000 here, we're going to say, and we're going to say that the other side is going to once again go into furniture and equipment, furniture and equipment. And then I'm going to scroll down a bit <clears throat> so I can see it and then record, record it. Something you're trying to use has been inactive. Hold on a second. Did I pick up the wrong account? Furniture and equipment and then save it. Okay, I think it's working now. I think I got it to work. So there it is. So let's go back to the balance sheet again. Back to the balance sheet. Let's make it let's make it fresh, running it, holding control, scrolling up just a bit. Let's drill down on <clears throat> to checking account again. Drilling down on the checking account, we're going to see that check there it is. There's that check. If I click on it, we go into the check this time. Looks like an expense form, but now it has a check number. And so I'm going to close it. Now, note that if I wanted to print the checks, like actually manually print them, I can say I can say that I want to print them later and then put the checks actually into the into the printer because there will be uh, pre-made checks that we're going to have to use the printer to print out on. 
So no, you can keep that in mind as well as you're actually printing the checks from the system. Going back <clears throat> the other side into the checking account, my voice is really just trying to, don't go voice, I need you, I need you. So there it is, there's the 7,000 there. Let's go back on up top and go back then to the summary. And let's check it out on the trial balance. Let's go to the trusty trial balance, which is a nice uh, condensed format. Run it, hold down control, scroll up just a bit. So there's what we have thus far on the trial balance. Now, before we finish up here, I'm going to make actually an adjustment to one of the transactions. And note that as you make these adjustments, you need to be careful about, about making them. QuickBooks allows you to kind of go back in and make adjustments back into the data. But if you want to be careful not to do it in prior periods, and even in the current periods, it oftentimes would be better not to adjust an error, but rather to enter a transaction to kind of correct it but I'm going to go back in and say, OK, what if I had a transaction wrong? Could I change it at this point in time? And if you were reviewing your transactions, you could do it thusly. You could say, OK, this account, let's pretend this account was different on my books than your books. If I drilled down on it back to the source document and let's say I'm going to say, OK, this 18,000 right there, it should be 16,000. Let's say it should be 16,000. I miss ink. I miss keyed the 18 and the 16. Could I change that? Well, I can. QuickBooks will generally let me. I'll, I'll drill down on it, and that will take me then to the source document, and then I'm going to change it in basically the source document here. So I'm going to say, okay, this should be 16,000. So you need to be careful with those kind of adjustments, and, and but just note that it's possible, of course, then to do that. When you're working through the practice problem, it could be a useful tool to do. So I'm going to then save it and close it save it and close it. I'm going to go back then to our summary on the trial balance. I'm going to refresh it, making sure I got the new updated number here at the 105. And that's what we have thus far. So if you're following along, this is where we're going to be going forward. We got the cash to 105, accounts receivable 20,005, the inventory 2,896, the short-term investments at the 12,000, 7,005 on the accumulated depreciation, 98,000, Furniture and equipment, fifteen thousand on the accounts payable, credit card one thousand, loan payable seventy two thousand, the owner's investment at the sixty five thousand, and the equity at the seventy seven eight nine six.